Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hello and welcome to the 535th Tuesday edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Talking professional wrestling so much more. I'm Mike Sorg, your uh, Master of Ceremonies for this evening. At Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we're doing Mayhem Coast to Coast, representing three time zones. And we've collaborated one as well. In studio, the big news in studio is... Usually of Poughkeepsie, New York, the only Mayhemer who has a future endeavor letter from the World Wrestling Entertainment, Mad Mike. Yes, yeah, Sorg, I'm here to represent New York. Oh, and he brought his accent I'm with here him. here to represent New York, Sorg, he not let- Boston. I'm not representing Boston, your- I'm not representing anywhere else, not representing California, I'm representing New York. He could have left the accent behind, but he didn't. I actually picked it up on the mega bus on the way here. <laughs> yeah, that seems right. <laughs> All those transient mega busters, right? <laughs> exactly. So exactly. Also with us from Dallas, Texas. Jeez, you keep moving, it's, and I have to remember. You know, I, I literally have stayed in the same place for like a month. So. Yeah, yeah, that's rare. That's rare. Um, uh, but by way of Austin, Texas, as he is for that. The voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Eamon Payton. Hello, Sorg. How are you this evening? Good it's a fine, fine evening. I love you. Eamon is typically a lot more excitable before the show. Answer then my I, question. Then I introduce him, and he goes into this mode. He goes into Eamon. Hi, yeah. does hi, the, Eamon. Does it, it, yeah, I, think, I, think we, I, I think the general public needs to, you know, get it. I don't want to go too... You know, balls be well, stuck now. You, you got to ease your way in. You got to ease your way in. Sorry, I think it's a good representation because we have me, who's typically more high energy. So Eamon brings it down a little bit. Bring it down. Bring yeah. it down. Simmer down. down. Simmer so, down. So, Simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer down. Down. Simmer down. 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 Closer. Down closer to the midriff. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Uh, All righty, and also you just had the cigarette weight. That means the duck comes down. Also with us from somewhere in California, California. Is Alex Cars powered to the Smarks on the Twitter Chikarin fifteen dot com? Hi. Hey. And other things about midriffs. I'm sorry, I had an intro and I got nothing. Midriffs. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Wrestling Mayhem show. We talk pro wrestling. We have some fun, and we hope you join the conversation too. You can subscribe at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Uh, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, uh, Spreaker. No, I said that one. Stitcher? No, I said that one. iHeartRadio? Yes! YouTube and Facebook. We have video and audio versions, all those different places. You can join us live here every Tuesday at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Around 10 p.m. Eastern, we go live and we're talking about something, you know, whether it be wrestling or not, uh, right after SmackDown goes off here on the East Coast. Also, uh, 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Please let us know what you think of pro wrestling. Ask us questions. Whatever you would like, just say, hey, man, good job. I appreciate it to Eamon, especially. Eamon <laughs> needs that. Eamon, Eamon needs the thumbs up right now because you hear how depressed he is at the beginning of the show. He's fine until he comes on our show. And he's like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Uh, what part of Texas am I in? Just, just tell Eamon he looks like Benjamin Franklin. I don't I know why that is. That. I don't... Who did you say I look like before, Mike? Benjamin Franklin. No reason. Oh. God, I don't know. It, it jumps back and forth. <laughs> Anyways, you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com And then there's other things I'm supposed to mention here, too. Oh, yes. Uh, please join us on the Patreon. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers, uh, including Bo! Diggity. Woo! As well as the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's uh, Foundation for Podcast Betterment. 
uh, uh, Alex Cars uh, representing hey, here on the you. show as part of it. Bobby F. J. Town and Ed Burke. Thank you so much for supporting the show, putting your money where our microphones are, and uh, and, and 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 showing us that good faith. If you guys want to join the show, if you guys want to participate in your financial ways and become a boss of the show and get the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold Special Editions, Patreon.com slash Wrestling mayhem show so let's get into it guys um let's talk about the bad guys can we talk about the heels can we talk, talk about, about the let's week talk about heels, this baby. has been the week of the <laughs> heels guys <laughs> it's just, yeah. so good to be bad this week on raw and smackdown but 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 are they sword are they heels? Listen, Eamon, I think there's a little heel in, in all of us. There's a Are little really? part of us that gets angry because they've been put down for so long. And nobody uh, nobody nominates them for a podcast award for doing this for so long. And, and but that's, that got a little bit weird. But anyways, uh, no. And, and it started with Miz. It, it, it really did, didn't it? It started with Miz during this show last week. He's on ta- uh, Smock, Smocking Tack. Smocking tack. Smocking tack. I, I actually, I've literally like written. I don't know how many times smacking talk on this. Smacky talk. Smacking talk. I'm trying to talk about this. Did he say making fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, Would you like to wrestle Daniel Bryan? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, clerks if you need a reference yeah. there uh but anyways but no uh he delivered a a real intense promo and not just the stuff that he was uh verbally attacking daniel bryan uh and, and i thought it was amazing this is miz at his finest this is the miz this is why we love the miz uh because he delivers when he needs to the most despite where he is um I, like after that promo he should have just dropped the mic, and they should have just played "Hate Me Now" as he walked off stage. Oh yes! Like, like it should have just been a, a mic drop. You can hate me now, but I won't stop. Now. And I can't say anymore, otherwise we'll get sued. But that's what that, that's what should have happened. Like right after that, like he should have just Marie should have just had it ready on her phone. <laughs> he should have just dropped the mic and walked away. Just like, go to her, and she pulls up her phone and goes, "Bink." <laughs> Because that that was like peak Miz. Mm-hmm. Like Miz has not been that good since he had the title at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, because it's always about he's a guy that's. I, all- I don't know. I, oh, go ahead, Eamon. I, 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 I I'm going to disagree with you slightly. I think Miz has. I, I, I had this discussion with somebody recently about Miz, and, and I do think he's somebody that does for the most part consistently deliver. I think like the only times I haven't really liked Miz was that. Uh, that time where he was the good guy getting the, you know, using the figure four that Ric Flair passed down to him. That wasn't a great time. Uh, and like his early like stuff hosting the Diva Cert. Other than that, I really enjoyed Miz like character wise throughout his career. Like the stuff with, I've said this before on the show, but like the stuff with uh, Miz Dow, like it would not have been as good if he didn't have the Miz being a perfect heel and a perfect foil to uh, Damian Sandow. Like, I think he has shown in the past that he can deliver um, story-wise when he's given something, when he's really direction, really giving, uh, given the opportunity to try something different. Uh, at least play what from the heart. Um, you know, obviously, I don't think it was a you know a shoot, guys. It was <laughs> they weren't working, uh, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was good. And, and emotional and passionate, I think that's what Miz needed. You know? I think there were some real things in there, though. Like, mm, maybe certainly. some things that Brian didn't expect him necessarily mm-hmm. to harp on. Mm. What do you th- What do you think, Alex? Uh, I I remember watching that right as I was, like, getting ready to sign off for the night. And that promo on talking to Matt was just, like, amazing. Although... I, I pointed this out, and I'd even sent like a DM to Matthew because something I noticed from the video was, in all that seriousness and all that heat, the Miz still managed to remind us that there is a reason why he is the title. Um, that was fun. Well, I mean, I think but, I even add to it. Like when you get heated, when you get heated, you don't speak. I know perfectly. it was in the heat of the moment, but yeah. 
still, no, that that promo though was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I've generally liked the Miz as a performer, and like stuff like that is why. And uh, I don't know if we want to talk too much about SmackDown tonight because I don't know how many everybody actually seen it yet. I happen to get to catch most of it, and his opening promo on SmackDown was was also amazing. I thought it was a really good follow up. Really, mm-hmm. um, kind of summed up in the line about okay. Like he been talking about like the WWE having him do all these different things. Like, yes, we'll have you re- main event WrestleMania and also then be a chicken. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Like, like he's the go-to guy, and and that, I think that's been co- quietly recognized. Be like, man, Miz is everywhere. Miz is the guy. He, uh, Miz, Miz rides that Hollywood thing, even if it's straight to DVD from the chat room. Um, oh, it just moved. Um, Jen's in there uh, saying that she usually uh, doesn't like him because he's boring as fuck, uh, but liked him tonight. Although he should have gotten in the brawl with Dolph instead of leaving. I I I I, I disagree because th- that's a heel that's a heel move. That's an ultra heel move, right? Um, yeah. But there was enough to make you believe. Oh, he's gonna go for it now. He's gonna go for it now, and no, he's gonna be missed, right? Uh, so I- go ahead. I was just saying, I really love the concept of the idea being like, like just the main point, points that he kind of mentioned was that I've been in WWE for 10 years. I've never once been injured. You know, people don't say I have the best matches on the show, but I'm consistently there, you know, and I don't think you can say that not just for Daniel Bryan, but for a lot of people that are like the guys that are like having con- the matches people are raving about in ring wise. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say close to down for like a bit of time. I can't think of it as like a thing. Like, I, I think that it says that, yeah, I'm not killing myself like some other people, but I'm consistently there. I'm here when you need me. You know? Right. Yeah. Miz is all reliable. He is. He, he, kind of like in the way Christian was. Yeah. Christian was almost always the same way until he started getting injured and then he just didn't stop getting injured. But mm-hmm. Christian was always one of the guys they called on, like, when you needed someone to take some bumps or to do a segment or something like that, like he was always in that mold. He's one of those, the, the good hand. Yeah. I think they, they refer to it as right. Yeah. Well, and, I try, I try to avoid that. Cause and, that can sometimes have a negative. That's true. That's it. true. Um, but yeah, you kind of get slotted in that spot for forever. Um, and I think, I think the biggest thing is Miz has always been somebody with a chip on the shoulder. Cause he's always been from the start. That guy from Real World, that guy from Tough Enough, that guy from the reality shows that came over to wrestling. So he did, like, from day one, he's had something to prove, and it has continued. And even to the position that he spoke probably very truthfully to uh, last week on on Talking Smack. I need to write that down on my thing next to Finn Balor. Um, hey, you got it, Sorg. Because I, I looked at my sheet first. <laughs> uh, but anyways... Uh, but and I think that's why it works so well. Every time I see someone like it's just like the McFoley thing, you have to believe what you're talking about. And he yeah. he reached down for that one, right? All right, I'm I'm thinking about this new Miz that we're seeing, and if you look at the Miz and the Rock, they have very similar character paths, not career paths, but character paths. Like when Rock came in, he was Rocky Maivia. No one cared about him. People booed him. When Miz came in, he was Mike Mizanin. Everyone booed him. Everyone hated him. Um, started getting involved in a group. Miz with Miz and Morrison. And Rock with Nation of Domination. People started to boo them, but really enjoy them. Mm-hmm. And they were putting on some good stuff. They started getting some like lesser titles. And then Rock, like, Rock went corporate. Miz started going corporate by being a company guy and doing a lot of the press work and everything. And then Rock went Hollywood. Miz went Hollywood. And then uh, you have to remember, there was a part where Rock came out and started being like, he came out and he called out people for like saying WWE is his home. This is his passion. This is what he does. Even if he's not here all the time, this is what he was born to do. And now Miz has kind of taken that next evolutionary step. Like, if you watched Miz on Real World, his favorite wrestler was The Rock. And he's literally, like, slight alterations, but he's literally taken the exact character path of The Rock. And So in, we can expect in five years' time, he's going to come out in WrestleMania, 
uh-huh. with a flamethrower, yes. uh, light his name on fire on yes. stage, and then beat up people we're supposed to care about. Okay, Absolutely. Cool. Yep. He's probably yep. going to beat up John Cena. <laughs> oh, someone else. You know, he just takes that one role for, for The Miz to take off in Hollywood, right? He, he's going to end up teen- teaming with Conor McGregor. That's what it is. Oh. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Uh, well, uh, there you go. I, yeah, I think I think the Miz lit a fire under a lot of stuff this week. Um, I mean, I, SmackDown was like, what are they going to do? How are they going to reference this? Although, although I thought Daniel Bryan was going to sit, actually uh, uh, was supposed to be responding to to what happened last week as well, and it was just the Miz for the most part. But well, he was like, I, I, I. I they had that segment at the beginning with Shane and Daniel where it was like, Shane's like, I think you should apologize, Daniel. And then Daniel's like, you're probably right, but we never saw him apologize. So it's like... Well, yeah, okay. because then he backhanded complimented Shane, so I think it's like, yeah, I should apologize, but look who's talking. <laughs> do you guys think like this is... Just going great. <laughs> do you yeah. guys think this is building to a Daniel Bryan match? That's the rumors I've been seeing. Headlines have been refusing those to are, read. Those but, are uh, rumors. I don't agree with them. I, I think. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe it's one of those things where maybe not have a match, but there could be a confrontation. There could be a match where certain things don't happen. Like, because I, I, I think, I think, despite you know, when when you get an injury like that, and I his was pretty serious. But look, like Bret Hart was put in matches, and Bret Hart is not good to do matches, right? But you were Bret Hart around. beat the Miz, right, right, <laughs> for the U.S. title. Yep. In Canada, in Canada, uh, hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's it's you can work around the issue. You can well, he's not taking bumps. He's not doing X. He's not doing X. Why? You're not going to get a Daniel Bryan match. But if they say we're going to call it a street fight and we do this stuff that's actually kind of safe, so that it happens. I mean, I, I think psychologically you can do it. So, um, either that or maybe Daniel Bryan says, "Well, you know what? Fine." I can't wrestle anymore, but I do have someone here who can wrestle. And then he brings in, like, the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, Zack Sabre Jr., to SmackDown. Maybe. I, I think if you're going to build it to, like, a Daniel Bryan Miz confrontation, it has to be a match. Again, it has to be, like, an actual competitive match because the concept is that Daniel wants to wrestle again, and Miz is telling him that he can't and that he's a coward and he's a quitter. So... I really so, Daniel can't just like do it with my heart didn't so, like just hit one move and that's it. Yeah, so you're you're saying if he has anything less than a regular Daniel Bryan match, then the Miz is proven right. Yeah. Hmm. A little bit. All right. All right. Well it'll be interesting to see here as we go, see if they actually do something they've kind of uh uh they got something special on, on, on Talking Smack. Uh, I I'm curious to see what they do tonight because I saw Rhino and Heath Slater on there. Of all things that were amazing on SmackDown tonight, by the way, Sorg, we, we need a name Slater's for them. Wife. We need a name for them. Yeah, so the Red Rhinos, Red Rhinos, Red Rhinos, Red Rhinos, Red like Rhino, it. Red Rhino, Red Rhino. Red Rhino was <laughs> funny. Hey, I love the in all the matches of the show, like a match against the Headbangers, like simple three minute thing, and Rhino got like busted open. So. <laughs> well, Eamon, they're BC called the Dub. Head BC Bangers. Dub. BC Dub. They Nothing bang says easy dub quite like being busted open in three minutes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's easy dub for you. All right, guys. Well, if you want to catch more Rhino, like uh, there he is on the poster behind me, uh, Cage for you last year, IWC. Hey, he's also coming to town here in Pittsburgh for House of Hardcore, presented by the IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, but you can see what he did here last year in 2015 and so much more over at IndieWrestling.us. So many hot, hot titles. Clint. Oh, look at that guy! Who look who's there? It's a very European. The travels of Claudio Castagnoli and IWC. A very very fine release that is uh, uh been going around, as well as the aforementioned Cage Fury. Next week we'll be releasing the RWA's uh, Aggression, featuring um. Wait wait, I got the poster right here. Uh, that one's featuring uh Sanjay Dutt and a bunch of friends of the show, Jesse De- Bell Smothers. Shane Andrews, look at that. Look at that right there. It's a very beautiful looking poster. It's a poster, good poster. Sork. It's a good poster from our friends at Iron Skull Productions. Uh, give them a shout out. They do really, really, really cool stuff. I can't it can't fit it around my mic stand. Uh, but there's there's this right said. there. So look for this. Look at this. Look, there's a hentai and a Marshall Gambino and a Bobby Shields. 
So, um, but yeah. Hey, Gambino Brothers. All that will be available at IndieWrestling.us. Go sign up for the newsletter. Get updates on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, probably not this week because because I'm I'm going to be on vacation. Uh, but on the Wrestling Mayhem show on releases from Indie Wrestling US, IWC, RWA, VOW, uh, Prime Wrestling Classics. Uh, uh, we have some Border Border Championship Wrestling, Border City Wrestling. Messed that up. Scott DeMore's thing up there in Canada, and so much more. Uh, go check out Indie Wrestling US. Well, the week of the heels continued as uh, we were uh, watching Raw. And uh, somebody ran into the ring. The most well-dressed fan running ever. That's what yeah, I thought so, we were seeing. Sorry, that wasn't a fan. That wasn't... What? That wasn't a fan. What? That was actually the COO of World Wrestling Entertainment, Sorg. What the Ooh. hell? Sorg yeah. Daddy's home. <laughs> and show title. And show title. Daddy right, sending that to Slack right now. Thank you. But no, because I want to get into this discussion. Uh, and we talked about the raw wrap up. Awesome for Kevin Owens. We're we're all we all are obviously happy about what happened last night. But is he a heel? Is yes. he a heel? Yes, he's still. The crowd is. chanted, "You deserve it," at him. When the heel uh, authority figure beat up two men and handed a key to the championship. And Listen, Amen. Amen, Amen. You're in this, this strange world where up is down, black is white, sideways is up ways. Dogs and cats. Dogs, Dogs and, and cats. cats. We're, we're cheering the heels. Oh, my God. I just described the Attitude Era. Um, also, what? heels can deserve things. Yes. Heels can deserve things. Like Heels can no, be agree. good. You can hate Seth Rollins because he was that damn good. You can hate <laughs> Triple H because he was that damn good. You know, I, I, I don't agree with this. Like I'm cool with it. Like I don't. I think the lines have been blurred over the years. Obviously, when it comes to amen. the face and the heel. Amen, amen. When you're playing devil's advocate, never back down. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. I find, it, I find it really interesting. Like the whole concept of like, mm-hmm. you know. Just how that whole ending with this thing is special. Everybody. Who cares? He's been an asshole ever since he's been around, and he's so good at it. You have to appreciate it because it is entertaining. Period. Yeah. Right? So so whether it's a hero or not, whether they play him as a heel, they have to. I, I can't imagine a Kevin Owens being face at this point. I think he's just an asshole, and maybe maybe it, 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 he, he just is Kevin Owens, much like Stone Cold was Stone Cold. And you only really align him as a heel or a face because of who's on the other side of the ring. Yeah, it, it, he, Kevin Owens is an object of destruction. Whoever you, he, you point at him, that's his alignment. Like, that's yeah, his agree. alignment. Same thing with Triple H, honestly. Because Triple H, went, if he went after Seth first instead of Roman, mm-hmm. that would have gotten huge boos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would have gotten huge boos. But because he went after Roman first, he got the cheers because no one wanted to see Roman win. Also, yeah. I do also love that we have to wait a week to find out what that shit was about. Like they, no... they did a backstage, uh, they did an after Raw video, okay, where it was um, Seth like outside the ring, and he was going, he was just asking, "What the hell was that? What the hell was that?" And Stephanie's like, "I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I didn't know he was here. Mm-hmm. Like it was the whole thing, and it's." It's going to be really interesting to see where it goes. I love that. Oh, there's so many sides to this. Uh, much I was talking about how SmackDown, it's like every... I, I, was, we, I was talking to Mike earlier about, like, uh, you know, the, that, the Shane and, and, and Daniel throwing, throwing, throwing that. I was like, everybody's sh- throwing shade on SmackDown right now. It's throwing really shade and talking smack on Tuesday yes, nights. So yes, like. you, got, you, got, you got two levels of power figures. And when, like, you already had it with Stephanie and, and, and Mick, where they were kind of watching over their shoulders at each other, right? And now you have that with Shane and Daniel Bryan again. Yeah, it's weird that like Shane and Bryan seem to be more like dicks. More what we we like lost they, you. What? More what we lost you there. Oh, uh, they seem to be more like the dicks of the two, like mm-hmm. of the two brands. Like oh yeah, well Daniel Bryan, like when he does promos, he always comes off a little jerky. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Sami Zayn has the same problem. It's just like. Just the attitude that they kind of have, it may, like it's very hipstery, which can come off as very jerkish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, 
but I, but I just find it weird that like that combined with like the stuff we saw tonight with like Shane and Brian like kind of poking at each other sort of thing. And then like Stephanie and Foley are on the other show being like, we can work together. We're, we're actually working very well together right now. Which like, is it's awesome. just a weird like. Which is great. Which is it, great until they don't. Right. And yeah. that's probably next just, week. <laughs> yeah. It just, it just like feeds that kind of thing I've said before. It's like, it feels like the shows are reversed. Maybe it's like you this thing. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like, like this thing where, where Stephanie's where, bringing in the cruiserweights and Daniel Bryan's like headbangers. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Bryan counted. Daniel Bryan, I see your cruiserweights and I bring you Rhino, the headbangers, and Kurt fucking Hawkins. <laughs> and maybe Shelton what Benjamin. Now? Maybe Shelton Benjamin. Um, uh, it is weird because as, as these like old faces are showing up on SmackDown, I feel like it's that period when we had um, um, uh, two cool face the Ascension for some reason on the first NXT arrival. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, like, oh, we got to have some of these old school stars so people will take a look and hopefully stick around, right? Like, did SmackDown just become uh, NXT from two years ago? What's what's going on here? You know, or yeah, but it's like that put the ratios off, like right. Like right. obviously, there's more of you guys, but like, like, there's too many old guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a, there, 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 we, we we have the WWE draft. There'll be more chances and new matchups, and everybody's gonna get a new chance at this. Yeah, all the guys from 15 years ago. I I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it. Although I'm not pushing. Even, well, not even all the guys from 15 years ago. Not like other than Rhino, who, who I do like. Like the guys from 15 years ago that no one really cared about. Like people thought the headbangers were overrated in '98. That's uh, not necessarily still, true. No, no, no. We still loved seeing them come out. Come on, that was great. Did you? That was great. I mean, that was a period where you're like, he's coming out in the Manson shirt. That's cool. Did you <laughs> love all the times they were on Sunday Night Heat, Sorg? Uh, yes, yes. I, well, I, yeah, yeah. I was late to the headbangers Amen. game. Amen. You weren't around, then you don't know that feud oh, with the you insane. Don't fucking Clown? know, Amen. Come on, man. That feud with my, the insane my, clown my posse. Team beat Cleavage. I've seen Beaver Cleaver. Don't, don't no, bring that up. No, 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 we don't bring no, that name up. No, no, we don't we, bring that up. Nope, nope. That's like we, we don't, don't bring, bring up meat. We don't bring up a lot of things. Don't bring up Lowdown. PMS. PMS. We don't bring up PMS. We don't bring up Kerwin White. Remember when they made Moss like uh, seven in the era? Even though he was from like New Jersey. <laughs> with with the low brown. Lowdown. 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 Low oh jeez. Um. Where they tried to make him look like Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter. <laughs> they did. They did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that time Edge was a vampire. That uh, time Christian was a vampire. Um, the time I think the Hardys were vampires. No, that's now, Sorg. That's now. That's oh, now. That's something else. That that technically is right now. Matt Hardy is kind of a vampire. <laughs> um, we're, we're kind of going all over. But I love that Jeremy, Ber- Jer- Jeremy Borash was on a, a Cole Cabana Live this week and talked about, he's, uh, I imagine he was talking about uh, uh, NEW up there in New York, uh, that, that, that some high-profile indie show, he's going to be hollowed in the back uh, uh, operating the drone so Vanguard 1 can come to the ring with Matt Hardy. I hope yeah. that's somewhere. That's I'm amazing. I'm sure. I know exactly what stadium that happened at. I'm sure it happened. Yeah. Because it was yeah. Matt Hardy yeah. versus Sammy Callahan. And from what I heard, that match was weird. Weird? Yeah. Can, can I have to just also just say from SmackDown this week that it's clear that the final deletion has been beaten by that Heat Slater Rhino segment. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. They, it, well, Which is basically them just making Heat Slater Jamie Noble. Well, I, I, I was worried about the yep. vibe because I, I talked about it a long time ago on here. I was watching Tuesday Night Titans, like one of the first episodes, and they went to somebody's house, and there was like very, very sketchy overtones that he was beating his, his entire family. Uh, okay. And I was like, no, we're not going there, are we? Uh, thankfully not. We just had Rhino peering out the window. <laughs> Eating, eating, uh, squeeze cheese. Eating, eating uh, squeeze cheese. He is somebody. He is somebody's state representative. He represents voting. He represents voters somewhere in Michigan. Rhino stands for in ground pool sork. In ground pool. In ground pool. Man, I really hope I have the opportunity to talk to him here when he comes to town again. I've I've had about two discussions with Rhino, and they've always been unexpected <laughs> super nice guy but we talk about so there's that time i talked about uh, boats with with rhino 
There's a time we talked about germophobia with Rhino. You know, like that's like that's like your like yeah, great guy though, uh, awesome dude. I, I love every time he comes in, but um, I love that he's he's hanging out in a trailer with Heath Slater. Um, but anyways, Kevin Owens. <laughs> hey, can can I um can I make a controversial statement on here? No. Oh God. Am I no, allowed you. to make a controversial statement no. on this show? I, I think technically it's your show, sort. So, so no. technically, this show belongs to Alex Cars, Jen and yeah. Matt Carlins, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, and Bo oh, Diggity. Okay, so we sh- Cars Thank is you. is a uh, Sorg allowed to make a controversial statement? Technically, you are the boss. Oh, he's giving so a thumbs up. He's giving okay, a thumbs okay. up on I was going to say, I'm not looking at... Sorg has a weird setup where I'm staring at him, right but everyone there. else... Is... Everybody's over there. Sorg, right. I have no without. peripheral. Listen, listen there's, there's Roman the Reigns. Roman Reigns is still in the doghouse hanging out with Stoke Monkey, and then there's there's everybody else. Sorg, I'm just Sorg. scared because you have a giant gonzo over here. You haven't seen the gonzo? No. <laughs> I have not seen... And All right, I'll tell you why I'm scared of gonzo on gold. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sorg, what's your controversial opinion? I don't have a problem with the Universal titles looks. But. I mean, it's not controversial. I mean, I think people hate it. Apparently, it's controversial. Apparently, Mick Foley's still making statements about it. Is um, he really? Yeah, he's. Uh, 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 last night, he was. there was uh, some statement, I think, on Facebook where he was like, Tonight's match was great because it wasn't about what the title looked like or anything like that. It was about oh, it. Cool. was about a dude in a fight, and he got any 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 won an opportunity and da, 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 like this kind of thing. It's like people people chanted it for like ten minutes or not, yeah, like maybe like a little less than ten minutes. Apparently, like, apparently not enough. Showed. Apparently not enough for me to figure out on SummerSlam that they were what they were chanting. Yeah, okay. Just, but you know they kind of did that to themselves. It. Yeah, I'm sorry, WWE did that to themselves. Show the title on Raw. Mm-hmm. Show what the title looks like on Raw. That way, you can have a big moment on Raw for the ratings. You show what the title looks like. I think they should. So you too. don't have to waste the whole demon entrance. Yeah, I think they. I think they should have to, to a little bit. Uh, or yeah, the or, belt. The or belt show, looks. No, show I mean, the belt the next night or something. Yeah, the right? the kind of leather they use for the belt makes it look a little weird at times. That's fine. But the concept of it is perfectly fine. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if once AJ Styles beats Dean Ambrose. Spoiler alert, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm assuming that's going to happen. AJ will change it because... A, uh, Sorg, what's AJ's color scheme? Is it blue? Redneck? Mm-hmm. What? Oh. Yeah, yeah it's black. Blue. Everything. It's blue. <laughs> it's it's it redneck. Our fashion consultant, Eamon, uh, chiming in on, uh, on belt styles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I, I would love it if... if Sorg's going by, and then his fashion sense is redneck. That uh, I would love him just coming out with a flannel championship. Yes! <laughs> oh yes! my god! Please. Yes! Uh, no, you know who should have done that? Mick Foley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that should have that should have been Mick Foley. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's like when Daniel Bryan was still vegan and had the championship. They should have made like a vegan leather championship, or like a spinny mm-hmm. uh, green onion knot. The, the <laughs> green onion. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of, of something. Was that? Was it? So the title belt should have been made of him, just to make a statement. Because he, I mean, it's renewable he, sources. Come on. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna wear that thing over his shoulder. I mean, you gotta make it. You know. Got but no, um, no, I think I don't understand why Mick would still go on it. Like people cheated about it for less than ten minutes because they had just seen it and thought it didn't look great, and then they got over it. They yeah, it was, it was the initial right. reaction. It would have happened regardless of when you showed it. Didn't ruin the match. Yeah. I was into the match. Um, additionally, actually, no, we'll have this discussion later in the show, I think. Uh, but I, I have a thought on the uh, injury conversation, in, in oh, particularly well, with Finn sorry, Barler. I have one more heel that we need to talk about. All right, there's more heel action. It is the yes, week of the heel. heel the um, week of the heel, and there's one more worth discussing. Carmella. Right, you guys okay. were talking about that in the chat room. Um, that went. I no, I somewhere. honestly think that it is one of the best moves SmackDown has made thus far. Because I think when Carmella other got, than other than Rhino and Heath Slater, of course, yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. No, well, technically, Heath Slater is not a part of SmackDown. He, than, he needs to win that title. Right. He needs to win that title. Right. Otherwise, he doesn't have a contract. Of course. I'm sure that won't happen. (laughs) 
But um, personally, like when Carmella came in, the segments that she had were great. Mm-hmm. The first time she came out of Enzo and Cass were great. Yeah. But when Enzo and Cass like, and Carmella started going their separate ways, Carmella always sounded more like a heel. Because she She's wasn't cocky. like the lovable. She's cocky. Yeah, I know. But she wasn't like the lovable scamp that Enzo Amore is. Right. Like when Enzo talks about, oh, we're the realest guy in the room on the smack talk of Skywalker. Like he's five foot two. Like <laughs> that. that's like that's like gang mad scrappy dude. You can't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. But when Carmella, who's like average height for a woman, you know, like decent wrestling ability. When she starts talking like that, it comes off very jerky. And I think. With Nikki coming in and getting a huge face, thanks for not completely fucking up your neck pop, and they have Carmella turn on her, I think that's the best move they could have done for SmackDown, and it really, really helps the women's division. And she's actually, I think she can embrace it more than trying to be a face just because she was aligned with Enzo and Cass. Right, right. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a smart move. Uh, I think they've done a kind of a poor job of explaining it. Like, because it was just kind of like Nick had cut a promo, and then Carmella was like, something was like, it's it's like, I don't love all the times about some heel turns where it's just like, oh, they just, like, the switch, they're like a robot, and the switch turned, and now they're a bad guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a way to explain it. Like, the idea of Nikki coming back and taking a spot for somebody who's an NXT girl who wants to make a name for herself. Like, that's something, a story that is viable and that you could tell, but they really haven't done a good job of telling that i don't know i, I, mean, I they, thought they, i thought nikki being introduced in the middle of the ring when carmella is standing there like they've done with the bronze stuff and with the nia jack stuff it makes carmella look like a jobber and i can see why she took offense to that i, I and yeah but i just think they need to emphasize that more you know i would love a carmella promo that maybe explained that yeah you know and maybe I mean? where she's yeah. just not spelling fabulous yeah like, i know how to spell that now so that's good i, I got something <laughs> how, out how, how do you spell it sorg F A B O L U S. You got it wrong. Shit. You actually got it wrong. <laughs> so, what's uh, the, the first ever Universal Champion's name? Who? The the the, the first the first champion. You know, the Demon King. What's what's his what's his Kevin name? Kevin Owens. What? No, no, no. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, that's Kevin Owens. Sin Balor. Close. You still say it kind of weird. Balor. Missed it okay. by that Balor. much. Balor. Yes. Valor. It's like Team Valor. So Valor. Like. Also, to answer your question, I think Fabulous is spelled C R E W S. No. Oh God! Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's the other thing for SmackDown. Please don't tell me we've we've given Apollo Crews a spelling gimmick. I think he, he just needs wants to something. remind people that his last name is Cruz and not Creed. <laughs> that's true. You know what? If if they. If they play into the Apollo Creed gimmick instead of Apollo Cruz, I think that would help him. No, no. They just give him because, Xavier Woods own yeah, gimmick. Yeah, yeah just, right. just make him Consequences Creed. Oh, no. Like, no, oh, I no. really think it would work. Oh. I, yeah, like, and then Xavier can come in as his son in, like, 15 years, and we can have someone. Oh. Hey, I think, I think Xavier Woods uh, should team up with him, and they should call the team Truth and Consequences. I think that's or a Or Truth or Consequences, <laughs> Yeah, I think that has been done Wait. actually. Yeah, yeah, uh, our truth and um, Xavier Woods did that. Uh, That's when uh, Xavier Woods TNA first got jokes. called up. Yeah, TNA did that too. Yeah, of course they did. Because they also did TNA. the final deletion. Let's not talk about TNA anymore. I don't want my brain. I want to talk actually. Kind of. Sorg, I, all right, I'm here, Sorg. Do you yeah. have any questions about TNA? Questions about TNA? Yes. Uh, we'll take that in the in the in the second segment here. Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank our friends, Slice on Broadway. Uh, did you have slice. some slice? It's a little cold, but it's been here for a bit. Oh, I but, did. Hey, you didn't pizza tell me, Sorg. I would have been here eating pizza. I didn't know it was available. I I don't want to move because I don't want to tap. Tell the, mic. the people. Tell the people. Um, Tell the people about the slice. Tell them. Uh, preach on about the slice pizza. All right, all right, you know what, Sorg, Sorg, I'm going to do this for real. I'm going to do this with my accent, Sorg. Because you know New Yorkers, we know about good pizza. We know where to get a good slice. And whenever I come to Pittsburgh, I go to Slice on Broadway in Carnegie, PA. I'm saying it your way just for you, Sorg. 
It's Carnegie, but I'm saying it Carnegie because that's where you go. You go slice on Broadway because they got the perfect slice of pepperoni pizza for the podcast in Pittsburgh. I change up your thing a little bit, so are you, are you all right with that? Yeah. Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway is the best pizza I've had in Pittsburgh, and trust me, so it's taking me to a few places. I ain't gonna name names, but Slice on Broadway is the best. Certified by a New Yorker. Hey, can I add to that, Sorg? I just want to point something out from our trip in California back in May. There were a few places in Boyle Heights to go to. And Michael Sorg, Sorgatron, he said, nope, it's not Slice on Broadway. It's not worth the trouble. I can't imagine getting a, a wonderful slice of pizza on the West Coast. Can't be possible. I'm still Alex, waiting for Alex, them to I ain't going to say nothing, but your coast ruined pizza. It ruined it. Nobody wants kale on pizza, Alex. Nobody does that. Huh. <laughs> I don't have a response to that. There you go. Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway dot com. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter and slice on Broadway on the Facebook and Instagram. Let them know the mayhem sent you. Uh, mayhem is going to send you uh, to a quick break and right back for the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. We are back, Mayhemers. Alex Cars, Eamon Payton, no, Mad Mike here with us as we talk professional wrestling. And it is time for the big question. As we discussed earlier, uh, there is uh, an interesting rash of, uh, of uh, old talent popping up here lately on Monday night, or I'm sorry, Tuesday Smackdown Live. Jeez. Uh, you know, uh, Kurt Hawkins, uh, the headbanger, Shelton Benjamin was supposed to come back until he got injured. And, uh, and Rhino. Uh, Rhino coming back and have a pretty significant part, part. So my big question for this week for you and you out in the chat room and you out on the internet, please hit us up at Mayhem Show with your answer to the big question or, or, or uh, in a comment if you're watching this on a video on YouTube or Facebook. Um, who would you like to see SmackDown bring back next? Gentlemen. I have my answer. Okay. One man, four words. Lethal weapon, Steve Blackman. <laughs> yes. He's a bounty hunter now. I want to see him bring his bounty hunter skills to the WWE and maybe run over Ken Shamrock with the car again or something. I don't know. Yes. Good answer. I Amazing answer. Idea. I fully support that idea. What about you, Mike? You got something? Uh, well, I could say Kurt Angle because that's the obvious one. No, you got to go for like a really obscure. Oh yeah, no, no. Trust me, Eamon. Come on, this is me. Do you think I'm going to actually bring in top no. level talents? No, no. <laughs> to come down? I can't. I can't bring a main event. I like, I like no. that Kurt Angle is considered top no. level. I like. That. I appreciate that. Well, okay. Um, here's here's who I think we need to bring in. I think it's someone that. Has a lot of history of AJ Styles. <laughs> Amen. Don't don't kill don't. Alex is dying Alex, over there. Alex, Alex is the one laughing. I have no clue. Don't kill the joke. Um, a former world tag team champion. A former. <laughs> a former ECW superstar. <laughs> That would be the indomitable Braden Walker. Oh. Ah, knock, knock. He's a real wildcat, Sork. Oh. <laughs> uh, never forget. Uh. Would be great Good if stuff. they did bring him back, squash him. And then we never hear from him again. Yes, like yes. pretty much like that's that weird that weird jobber segment we it, had tonight. It would be amazing. It would, the best like, of Braden like, Walker, honestly, Volume Two. He should be the first <laughs> opponent for WWE Champion AJ Styles. Do you feel like at a certain <laughs> point? Do you feel like at a certain point that Matthew from Boston Mania is actually booking SmackDown right now? He's booking everything else. 
I, I don't watch Botchamania, so I can't really speak okay, to that. Okay, okay. That's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Alex, what do you got? Mm. Well, it's funny that uh, Mad Mike would bring up former ECW superstars. I had someone in my mind, uh, someone well-known for his antics on all three brands, actually. Ross, SmackDown, ECW, you name it, he was there. Uh, him and his cavalcade of worms. That's right. He's the boogeyman, and he's coming to get uh, you. Oh, He'll come back no. eventually. He, he already <laughs> came he back. He back. He already there's came back. Rumble, it was on the Edge of Christian show. To be had. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. He, we'll see him at Halloween, guaranteed. He, he was on the Edge and Christian show. <laughs> but no, I like it. Like, like, tr- drop him randomly here, you know, in September. I think would be great. Give him, you know, it would be really let him be Heath Slater's uh, partner for Halloween night. It'd be Halloween really great. Halloween night, Bray Wyatt versus the Boogeyman. Uh, yes. Wow. Really cool. Listen, so man, you want to say you're the Boogeyman? You're not under my bed. You're not in my closet. You're in my ring, and I'm gonna knock you out of it. It sounds a little Mexican. Well, you so need to know. You're kind of. You're kind of Kind of do take a, a deep breath in between each like yeah. pause. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but, but, more but, yelling, but, but it's audio. <laughs> I like the direction you're going. I yeah. like the direction you're going, but uh, okay. Well, not, hey, not Mike, all of them. I think can you were be using worse. your Boston accent again. Listen, Alex. I'll tell you if I'm reasoning my Boston accent. Again, all right? Can we can we do a side thing where you read a, a Bray Wyatt promo in a Boston a Boston accent? Boston. We sure can. Can we? Can we? We we can we can try and make that happen. Right Let's see now, if we can so. find something. See if we can find oh, something. God. In the meantime, so your, so in the meantime, so I'm who going you more right practical. Victoria. Uh, oh, oh shit! Okay. That'd be awesome. That'd hey, be she's wrestling this weekend. Hell, she's Mo- this weekend. In that vein, yes. Molly Holly. Mm. Molly okay. Holly. All yeah. right, all right. Give me Molly Holly versus Nikki Bella. That would be a great match. Personal favorite. Love to see Mickey James again. Which I will be seeing this weekend at Chikara. I'm not going to make the joke we used to. <laughs> she touched me once. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, she br- she, brush- she brushed, but- brushed by me when I was doing camera. Did you she say she what? brushed she by you? Brushed, brushed by me. Brushed, okay. She- I thought you were what? Just what? Just what? Just what? Just what? No, no, well, I had a moment. Uh, I had a moment. Okay, I had a moment with Nikki James. Okay, let me have that. Let me have. Okay, that. just never mind. Um, yep. But anyways, let's move on uh, swiftly uh, to. Um, how are you doing, Mike? Over there? I, I think I got some. You got something? Oh no! It yeah. is a, it's I'm been good. a while since no we've more, done no something. I am Naida Wells. Are you ready to offend the entire New England region? <laughs> Sword, I'm a New Yorker. I'm always ready to offend the entire New England region. The Wrestling Mayhem Show and IndieWrestling.us presents Mad Mike reading a Bray Wyatt promo in a Boston accent. Okay, hold on. I, I, need, I need to get my levels for Boston. So, park your car in Harvard Yard. Park your car in Harvard Yard. Park your car in Harvard All right, I got it. <laughs> God damn it, I'm making myself laugh now. These are the things I pay for. Change isn't easy, but it is inevitable. It's a part of life, man. And it's how you deal with change that will ultimately tell you who you truly are. So I say tonight, we celebrate change. Tonight, we celebrate the spirits of the of Kane and the Undertaker. For over two decades, they have been the benchmark of power. The earth shook at their feet. And they, and they alone, possess the power to control the light and the darkness. And they have reigned supreme. So what I'd like to do right now is for everyone in this building and everyone watching at home, I'd like you to bow your heads and pay respect to the legends, to the icons that are Kane and The Undertaker. Can I, can I just say that, that now Bray Wyatt promos sound like they're being said by a guy that sits outside the 7-Eleven with like a 40 in his hand? <laughs> Like I was like gonna I could hear somebody wow. I could hear the drunk dude by your local convenience store saying something like I, that. I no, I felt more like he was reading lines from the departed. 
Well, um, I mean, so like everything sounds like the pod when you're in a Boston accent. You that's know what true. I'm that's true. Hey, that's true. Hey, new segment idea: Bray Wyatt or JFK? I am a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ask not. It been on Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> I am the face of fear. I am the face of fear. <laughs> Chowder. 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 Why hasn't there been Follow like a the buzzard. super Boston wrestling Follow character? Follow the buzzards. <laughs> so TNA. Nope. <laughs> Follow this the buzzards, so I, I think the one thing you know where the buzzards are. The buzzards are in Harvard Yard, <laughs> and I broke so question. Mike, how's TNA lately? Wicked retarded Sorg. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, That's I'm sorry. Person. You know what? No, I, he's impersonating a Boston person. I, I hate using that word anymore. So do I. But in that context, yeah, it works. Yes, like, yes. Like it, it that's the only reason that's I the said only it reason. Because... It's the only reason I'm not deducting mayhem points and putting you in mayhem jail is because you did it in an accent. It's for accuracy, Sorg. It's for accuracy. Sorg, this is my moment. This is your moment. This is my moment. Oh, jeez. <laughs> can't off of what else is new. The okay. Deletion. All right. So, like, I mean, okay. I should read a broken Matt Hardy promo. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. no you can do that in your own time. <laughs> okay. Hashtag broken that's what, that's Stay what, tuned. Next week's Midweek War, Mad Mike reads a broken Matt Hardy promo. No, no, promo no. no. The Boston that's accent. what Facebook Live's for. Okay. You have access to <laughs> the, 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 thing, the Facebook. The thing about, Mike, here's the thing about doing that, though. At least at some point during that promo, it's going to sound exactly the same. Because you put. <laughs> Between every accent imaginable. Deleted. <laughs> you will Brother deleted. Nero will be deleted. Oh, God. What, so, what, what, what do you... What, what? I have what? no specific question. I just kind of wanted to discuss it a little bit. I, it's I, bad. I, it's I, really bad. Is it really bad? It's really bad. It's, it's bad for your health. Like, it, because they're trying new things, or... Yeah. But, um... Yeah, but not things with, like, a, any sense of logic. Well, no, but no, I, I'm not saying logic on like wrestling storylines. I'm saying like logic from a business standpoint. Even <laughs> like, uh, I, I, you've not been following anything, right, Sorg? No, not not much since I, I watched like an episode, like most parts of an episode, and some of the YouTube stuff, like a couple weeks after the, uh, you know, the, the the big match that everybody's been talking about. You know. So, so you missed the part where they gave all the belts to Lashley. What? And, and then he dropped. You the ball. missed the and part where right after that. He he literally held up the King of the Mountain title and said, "What is this? This doesn't mean anything." And he threw it down. And you know what? The belt doesn't exist anymore. Or nope. Only for hacks like Jim Duggan to find in a trash can later that evening, or Eric Young and, when and, he but, resigns. But you know what? Belt he did the exact same thing with basically the X Division title. Well, so much for that. And you know what's happening? Six people are fighting over the X Division title now. The same six are. people. Because that's Wait, logical. Tell tell us about uh, tell us about the title that's replacing the King of the Mountain. Uh, we technically don't know anything about it yet because they're debuting all of that on this week's show. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it bothers me so much because oh, I feel like they, not good they've stolen so much from everyone else, and now they're stealing the name of the title from Chikara. And I, I can't say. stand it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And it's called yeah, the Grand what, Championship. Yeah, and it's bothering me so much right that's now. What the, that's what Chikara's main title is called. Oh, um, but it has none of the like perks of like Chikara. Like, <laughs> none of the TNA, none of the perks of Chikara. <laughs> I, need to, I need to put that in. I because I'm planning, I'm doing a new Chikara in fifteen. I need to put that in somewhere. So thank you, Eamon. That's why Chuck Taylor's only on the one night only pay per views. He was on. That's he was on an episode of Impact. For. Wait, yeah, which, losing a Jim Hardy in a handicap. Hey, wait, which Chuck Taylor are we talking about? Are well, we talking that, about the formerly known as Chuck well, Taylor? Excuse or, me, I gotta, I gotta But yeah, so um, TA but, is awful. Um, all right, hold on. I have a question, Sork. This is a question for you because I don't know if you know what's been going on with him, right? Uh, Damian Sandow. Yeah, I watched the promo when he came when he arrived. Okay. Um, Damian Sandow is a guy in WWE who literally made 
pretending to be Magneto work. Right. Any character you can give that guy, he will make work. Right. Um, Sorg, what do you think his character is in TNA? Being Damian Sandow? Nope. No, he explicitly said, oh no, that was a gimmick. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what his gimmick is so far? What? Being a very straight-laced special guest referee. <laughs> Being a guy. He has that is no all they have used him gimmick. for. So he's Bret Hart in 1997 Star King. Without yes. all of the panache and anger. Mm. <laughs> Nash and anger. Yeah, and that's me saying that about Bret Hart. And y'all know I don't like Bret Hart, and I don't think he has panache or anger. Hey, 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 Damian Sando, what do you think about Seth Rollins' uh, dangerous abilities in the ring? You know, oh. I'm pretty sure I, 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 I'm coming to a, a, a point on Bret Hart. I like the. I like the idea of Brett the Hitman Hart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the idea of Brett the Hitman Hart. The execution. I don't think I like the person, <laughs> Bret Hart. <laughs> so are you saying that Bret execution Hart hasn't been that? excellently executed? No, no. I want to say I don't feel bad about my documentary with him. <laughs> 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 the guilt is gone. Um, yeah, yeah. We know what Shawn Michaels is. Yeah. And we accept yeah. him. Like yeah. Now we now now he looks super old and he's teaching people in NXT and that's cool I guess. Yeah, you know. So that's all right. Is he really? Is he is he down there? Yeah, he's uh, has a training role at the performance center now. Orlando is pro wrestling training center and retirement home, like the full Chibu circle. Chibu 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 and Chibu 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 tweeted a photo of talking to him before a full cell taping. I mean, he looks so old. He looks so old. He <laughs> looks the same. He had his hair pulled back. Yeah. Yeah. No, his yeah. face looks old. His face looks his really face old. Looked been, that, it's, it's, it's been, been almost that 10 years since since he kicked Stan. Since he kicked Stan. <laughs> I would argue he looked better at WrestleMania. Listen, me. man, you kick Stan in the face and see how you look in 10 years. I'll ask Ty Dillinger about that. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Ty Stan, was Stan, 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 I mean, Stan. You guys Stan. talk about I, This is just a random random talk part of the show, but because you guys talked about this um, on on. Uh, the NXT cast. How freaking over is Ty Dillinger being the first thing coming out in Brooklyn and just exploding? It was pretty great. Just, they just, the, just they amazing. Ty Dillinger guy. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Keep in, mind, you, keep in mind, everyone really loves Ty Dillinger and Kurt Hawkins is returning to SmackDown for some reason. But <laughs> like, you like, know what if, I mean? If you listen to any interview with any NXT guy, if, they, if someone asks them who they like working with the most, they all say Ty Dillinger. Like, even Nakamura said it, like, on his uh, interview with Jericho. Ty Dillinger is going to have a job forever. Yes. He may not he be... He kind the, of already has. He may not be a champion, ever, or anything like that, but he will be there forever. Like, R-Truth isn't going away anytime soon. The, Miz, oh, obviously... Sorg, I figured out why R-Truth isn't going anywhere. Hmm. Because he smells the best in the locker room. That, that, that's a real thing. That's a shoot, brother? That's a shoot. Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks and Kevin Owens can confirm. Yes. What? Yes. Where did this happen? Is this a Twitter thing? Um, it, it, oh, it, this was a... It's an Uprox good. thing. It's a what? Uprox. Uprox? Yeah. The brand Stroud smell? Um, no, uh, Daniel Matheson had interviews with a whole bunch of people, and they asked everyone who smelled the best. The um, majority people said R-Truth. Second runner-up, uh, your boy over there. Roman, Roman, yeah. Oh, apparently, oh, oh, oh. apparently, that's just because of how much conditioner he uses. But so, so that's at least the bright side, Roman. Everyone hates you, but at least you smell good. At least you don't also smell bad. Uh, yeah, that reminds me of me in the sixth grade again. <laughs> Everyone hates you, but at least you smell good. That sounds like. I don't know, like <laughs> that. Um. But that, now, what do sounds, we? I, we went from TNA to Ty Dillinger to it works. Ro, how Roman Reigns smells, yeah, uh, in, in like a matter of three minutes. Damon, <laughs> it's almost like this is a show about mayhem about wrestling. Yeah, well, this feels like one of the old shows. This does. I like this. I like where we're going with this. So, are, are you gonna try a new energy drink? Um, 
I wish I <laughs> J- got tired of JBL Mama Joanna. <gasps> that was the best week. <laughs> that was the best week because Lunchbox almost died. <laughs> Wait, no, no, that was when he drank cocaine. Yeah, that was that was cocaine. Yeah, 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 yeah. He slammed it. He slammed it. That was bad. It's still on the internet too. You can tell it's been a light week in wrestling, guys. <laughs> <laughs> But so much, so much did happen, and we had so much to talk about uh, last week because of, because of uh, oh, between Sorg, Brooklyn and, and they SummerSlam, finally announced the full roster for WWE 2K17. Okay, um, Bailey is in it. All of the Horsewomen are in it. Oscar's in it. Nakamura's in it. Uh, pretty much, I didn't see any really glaring omissions mm-hmm. from the roster this year, which really, really good. And they even got guys like Arn Anderson, Lex Luger is going to be in there. Alundra Blaze is going to be in it. You can play. Did you know you can play as Tsumi Fujinami? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What? Yeah, you can play as Fujinami. They put in all the Hall of Famers, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's cool and weird. So it's kind of like uh, it, it. It partially feels like WCW versus the World. A little, a little bit, bit, yeah. Nice. Like I think the like I can't think of any real big names. That are not in this game, which is definitely not what we were saying about it this time last year. Mm-hmm. Which is good because I didn't buy last year's game. I'm gonna get this year's. I did enjoy. I gotta say, uh, WWE 2K16 for Xbox 360 was a wonderful weekend play when I got it out of the library. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah. That was all right. Oh, and not so worth not worth fifty dollars. Did you see? That was the, a lovely. Um, the the news I posted about a Glow Netflix series. Yes, very excited about that. So, uh, the the person that's behind both Weeds and Orange is New Black um, is going to be behind a show based on Glow, which the, was a women's wrestling fed. In the, the gorgeous 80s. ladies of wrestling. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Um, I actually I actually talked with uh, I never I actually never really used this interview, uh, but uh, somebody that Katie works with actually was up for the reboot they were trying to do around 2000. Oh, wow. That never, never happened. So, uh, yeah, that was a weird circumstance. I ended up like sitting down with an for an interview that uh, it just, I, it's, it's on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I'll just be like, <laughs> yeah, it's one time we talked to a, a woman wrestler that, that, that did this thing and context none. <laughs> okay. So, um, but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, is in uh, Allison Brie of of Community, Community, and Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I didn't yeah. realize she was also in Mad Men. I, I, I never watched it, Mad Men. I might be mistaken. I think she's also in BoJack Horseman. I, she is definitely yeah. also in in BoJack Horseman. She's the uh, the writer, right? Yeah. Uh, so she's going to be a part of it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Weeds and Orange Is the New Black, um, the attitude in both of those slash women empowerment is awesome. I'm super excited for this. I think it's I think this is gonna be a real, real fun show for Netflix. I think it's gonna be a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh so something to look forward there in like wrestling programming. The thing I've been mostly looking forward to in serialized programming since Roddy Piper and Jesse Victoria were cops on the show tag team. <laughs> Pilots out there, look it up. Look it up. Can you imagine if that would have taken off every right, week? Sorg, tonight after MacGyver tag team. Sorg, if you could recast tag team now using two <sighs> WWE superstars, who would it be? Miz and Ziggler. Mm, okay. I think okay. I saw. I think it's the obvious choice because because Miz gets picked for everything. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, I think they would. I think I think they're the ones that are most uh, TV photogenic. Uh, out of and, and both of them have done the, the, the WWE film movies. So I'm gonna say Mark Henry and Heath Slater. Ooh! Wow! Wow! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. He's huh? Uh huh. He slayers the loose cannon. Mark Henry's the guy that's a year away from retirement. <laughs> wait. So wait. Wait. Did you yeah. just confuse it for a lethal weapon? It's same thing. It was the same thing. Same show. Sure. Same show. Okay. Sure. All sure. right. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember how they. I forget, were they cops that became wrestlers or were they wrestlers that became cops? No, you're thinking the other one is Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Who would you cast in, a, in the new tag team? Heyman? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. God. 
there's so many options. <laughs> there's so many things to choose from. Uh, Amy, uh, you, could go so- you could go Sasha Alex? and Bailey. Alex? Um, consider, so in all honesty, I have not, like, I'm not familiar enough with the old tag team. I think we've given you basically was. the premise oh, that we got from the pilot. It, it, it's just a cop show. I've never yeah. seen it before. Yeah. I'm just spitting. Okay. I'm going to go with the natural chemistry between a tag team that was on SmackDown tonight, and I'm going to go for the Hype Bros, Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh. That could be fun. I, I would love to see them be cops in Miami. Yeah. Cops in Miami, that would be great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It'd be like just a little splash of Miami Vice mixed in too. Yeah, and, and you get the one serious episode where you find out Mojo had a daughter. Like oh, it's like I wasn't hype, bro. I wasn't <laughs> hype enough. Actually now that I think of it, going with going with Alex's theme, I guess, and, and with SmackDown tag teams, uh, I'll go with Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> And uh, uh, Wheels in the chat room says Seth Rollins and Ron Simmons. <laughs> I'm wow. on. I'm on board. Wow! Sign me up, Wheels. By the way, the pilot is on YouTube. <laughs> the of pilot course. is linked in the chat room. Just look up tag of team course. pilot. And guys, I think I'm watching this while I'm editing the show today. Sorg. I yeah. smell a watch party. <laughs> I watched this show. I want you to understand. I watched this show when it aired. I watched it when it aired, apparently wow. in 1991, and I was like, why aren't there any more of these? Because <laughs> that's back when they used to air like pilots that didn't have orders. Did, did they decide to make Thunder in Paradise instead? I know. Thunder in Paradise, <laughs> guy! What the fuck, TBS? Oh, uh, so many missed opportunities. Hmm. <sighs> they could have gone for tag team. They went for Thunder in Paradise. Guys, I want to know. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Want to know, I want to know. I want to know what love is. I want to know, know what aim and learn. Can you show me? Oh, God. Um, I look like I'm really happy wrestling. I can really happy wrestling sometimes. Raw happened and the ending happened and I literally could not stop smiling. Like my face physically would not relax from how much I was smiling. Thank you, Eamon. Thank you, Eamon. Alex! I want to know! Jakara15.com! What'd you learn in wrestling? So I've learned a couple things this week. I've learned that SmackDown Live is amazing. And I also learned that this weekend is probably going to be one of the busiest weekends in independent wrestling. Especially if your name is Cedric Alexander. (laughs) How much can we talk about Chakar's King of Trios and PWG's Bolo weekend? Can we can we can, can we, we talk just, about it in the last five minutes of the show? No. Can, can okay. we just run down? <laughs> oh, can we just run down the big names at each show? Yes. Real quick. Can you just sure, do yes. that? Make me like things yes, that if, if make me entirely jealous. I'm not gonna be able to go with you guys. Just just do that for five minutes. Just watch me. Just keep the camera on me. Watch me progressively angrier and angrier. Alex. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the PWG stuff first, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the names that are competing, uh, either in the actual tournament or as uh, non-tournament matches. Uh, you've got uh, you've got Chris Hero taking on the debuting, I think, or possibly returning. I think he was at some of the Wrestle Reunion shows. Uh, the uh, Jushin Thunder Liger will be in Bola this year. Uh, along with that, Zack Sabre Jr. and Tommy N. Uh, Phoenix from AAA slash Lucha Underground. Uh, Willa Osprey, Jeff Cobb, uh, known to be a bit of a monster when he wants to be, uh, facing off against Ricochet. You've got the man formerly known as John Morrison. Uh, some will call him uh, Johnny Mundo. He's known by his given name in PWG. Oh, he's uh, you got Pentagon Jr., Jr. Uh, I believe making a return to Bola. Hey, friend this year. of the show, Pentagon Jr. Mm-hmm. Friend of Zero the show. Middle. Yes. Uh, you got the villain, uh, Marty Skrull, uh, being in VWG this weekend. You've got Dalton Castle and his boys taking on Adam Cole and the Young Bucks in an untournament six person tag match. On the, and this is just the first night. 
Second night, you've got the likes of Sammy Callahan. Cody Rhodes is wrestling in Bola this year. Cody Rhodes. You may have heard of him. You may have heard of him. He's kind of a big deal. Uh, not to be confused with Hornswoggle. Um, got Matthew Riddle hey, of Evolve com- Fame. Who confuses those two people? The, I'll, I'll get to that. That's from later. Okay. Uh, you've, got, you've got the hero of the weekend, Cedric Alexander, uh, wrestling the second night against Mark Haskins. Uh, you've got New Japan favorite Kam- Kamai Tachi taking on Trevor Lee. Uh, Mark Andrews, Pete Dunn, Dalton Castle is wrestling his bolo match the second night. Uh, you've got non tournament tag team match as F- Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. take on Tommy and Chris Hero. And let's see, that's. Pretty much the big stuff from that. Oh, you also you also forgot to mention Dalton's opponent on the second night, which is Jack Gallagher. Oh, right. oh damn it! Son of a bitch! I know, Fuck! I know that. I know that would make Mike upset. Mm. That's my bad. I don't think we talked much CWC on this show. Mm. We'll we'll talk it when it's over. Oh, well, that's right. See, I haven't had a chance to watch much CWC. Oh, cars. you know what I love cars. Cars talking to you right yes. now. Soon as we're done, I don't care uh-huh. what kind of aluminum foil setup you have to rig to your internet. You watch all of CWC. Okay. As soon as we're the done best here. part, the best part. So I, a lot of times I'll just turn on the WWE Network live and hope it's not Total Divas. Um, last Wednesday they were running like a marathon. Oh, a marathon of the first round of of all of it, mm, nice. of all of it so far, like leading up. And I was like, I think this is the best ever. Yeah. <laughs> so so much sure. Um, so much since, since we haven't had you on midweek four, what's been your favorite CWC match? My so favorite far? CWC match. Oh, jeez, it's. I know it's tough. There are a lot of good con- contenders in there. Like, it, it is. It is like I. I. I don't know if I want to go with like one of the usuals. Like like okay, I'm going to disqualify the ones that everybody's going to say, which are Gargano and Tommaso, and uh, uh, Coda and Cedric. Yeah. Okay. The one where Gallagher was taking on Tazawa, mm-hmm. and he tied Tazawa mm-hmm. in tied a knot. Ball, yeah. That was like I'm watching something special here. <laughs> like that. that like yeah. I don't know if it's my favorite match, but that's like I'm watching some good shit here. Was, you know, it was really, really fun. like there is, there is, it, it, it makes you believe in wrestling again. Um, and it's, it makes believe, it makes you believe dreams are real. Yes, it makes you really do dreams. Dreams are real, and hope is alive, and Triple H is a really, really nice person. Um, he gave us Kevin Owens. Gave us Kevin Owens, so. yes. Uh, and as far as King of Trios goes, uh, I know we have a team CWC. Yes, um, Drew Gulak, Cedric Alexander, and Johnny Gargano. Right, Fuck. right. Um, the one team for the ladies is Mickey James, Victoria, and Jazz. Mm-hmm. The yeah. fuck taking on Candice LeRae, Solo Darling, and Crazy Mary Dobson. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Um, uh, I, you've also got I, I do want to bring up why I brought up uh, Hornswoggle earlier Oh, uh, you have Team Big Deal consisting of The Big Deal the man formerly known as Hornswoggle that is what he goes by in uh, uh, Chikara like, now is The Big Deal Hornswoggle has uh, and, a mafia gimmick now okay yep. I can see it He's and, like, and, a security, and a security force of Sloan Caprice and Rick Rowland good stuff uh, you've uh, we've we already named off some of the bigger names that are competing. I know no- also- nothing is announced, but if just randomly Stardust comes out for King of Trios, will make my life right now. <laughs> All right, Aven- oh, act- oh, actually, I do want to bring up one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There is one other team in particular. Uh, there's a team, and then there's a couple like other names for other stuff. But we've got. Uh, we have Team Police Squad. This is what I'm particularly happy about. Oh, wait. Because you've got Officer Warren Barksdale, you've got Bill Carr, and you've got Super Cop Dick Justice. The only thing that would make Dick that Justice better... Dick Justice is coming to Takara. I only, just want you to think about that. The only thing that would make You're that also, better is if they had Officer Cole Cabana from JCW. Uh, oh, that's not going to fly. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Sorry, that sorry. is a very specific character. Hey. For Amen, Amen, that's but... what, Amen, Amen. That's what they said about Super Cop, uh, Super Cop Dick Justice. I think Dick Justice can work in Chikara. I think this, this, I Dick Justice. Now, can work. D- does Chikara make them call him Richard? 
So you know they're uh, very PG. No, the proper name. It's the proper name. Um, <laughs> That's all good. Also- there's also a bunch of female Japanese. Uh, there's like two female Japanese trios. Yes, uh, yeah. Thing. That girls and JWP. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Wait, are they all in the like, same tournament, or is there like a separate female tournament? No, no. This is Sakura all is all in her Okay, I, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure they're champion. Yeah, I thought. They're uh, yeah, champ- I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's all hey, in their first. Can't well, their first. Uh, the the first like three or four names that they announced, like the first three or four teams they announced, were all women's teams. Yep. And so there was conversations about that. I was like, oh, that's the kind of team. Yeah. That's there's the a, kind of tournament. There are a here. lot of women's teams in this this year. So it's awesome. not just like, oh, there's one women's yeah. team and then that's it. Um, yeah. Like there's a and lot. There's some teams on. featuring at least one woman. Like Kimberly has a team. Yeah. Heidi Lovelace has a team. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's uh, the Lucha Underground team? Also, you have uh, team, you have team C Stars. Uh, that's that's uh, Ashley Vox and Delmi Exo, I believe. Mm-hmm. They are going to be in the Tag Gauntlet Night 3. Uh, you've also, I, oh, some of the names for, uh, Ray de Voladores, that's their sort of, uh, high flying tournament that they have on night two. They have Aerostar coming in. Uh, they have Frightmare from the Chikara roster, but they also have Space Monkey. And that's something I'm pretty monkey. happy about. I didn't see that. I, I, I only saw There's, uh, Anthony Meese as well from the Cruiser Classic. Is Anthony nice. Meese. Yep. But yeah, uh, Space Monkey is in Chikara. Sword, can you get it's a, a good year to be alive? Me? Can I get what? A picture of Frightmare for me? Why? He's still one of my favorite Chikara guys ever. Really? I love Frightmare. He so worked uh, IWC with us a few times. <sighs> yeah, I think I saw him. You just see him? I, th- I think that's where I got introduced to him, and then we saw him again when we went to King of Trios. Awesome. Yeah, he was a couple, including that like four way uh, ladder match for the Super Indie title with Facade, Matt Cross, and Del Sol. Was it Del Sol? Man, they're a mask guy. I know. It might have been. I could have been Delsol, which is Kalisto, by the way. Yeah. Uh, hey, Eamon. Hey, Sword. What did you learn? I already said what I learned. He said his. I, oh, I did he? To go. Yeah, I, I did. I have to go. Oh, oh. Was... Mad Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn? I learned that I can't wait until Kevin Owens defends the belt on Mars. <laughs> I, yes, that's the thing I thought of the whole time. It's like he's going to talk about so much about how it's the best title because it's the universe. Honestly, if the if there's one man that can make you think that belt that you don't like is more important than the belt that you do like, it's Kevin fucking Owens. Mm-hmm. Because I swear, Kevin Owens needs to just be in the background of every just like just sit him hard camera. Just sit him hard camera. Just do a rack. All just to show. react. Yeah. yeah. Just sit him hard camera for all the show. Have him react to everything. And, and you know what? Now he's a champion. He can actually do that. He can just come out and say, all right, I'm a uh, Byron. You can go to the back. I'm just going to commentate all night because all these guys are going for my title. So I'm here to scout everyone. <laughs> everyone. Oh, my gosh. It's great. That's yes. great. So and then, from and then the, per- the person he talks of the most is whoever Braun Strowman's facing. From the chat room. <laughs> from the chat room, Wheels learned that he can make a redneck air conditioner for an overheated soundboard. Yeah, because he was having some problems. How does that what you learn in wrestling? This show here. Oh, okay. This show here. Yeah, there were some, there some problems. It was a little hot. It was very hot. Very, hey, very hot. Hey, Sorg. Huh? What'd you learn? Today? Oh! 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 oh. Oh. That's what he learned. Okay. I learn. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should th- say this one. You should say it. Say it. Say it. Your boss is telling you to say it. <laughs> He's got a point. Somebody told me, somebody told me this weekend that they love the crowd they're working in front of so much um, that if, he, if it was an over-18 crowd, he would take his pants off. So that's just Jimmy DeMarco. We all know. <laughs> no, it's not Jimmy DeMarco. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's the guy from SmackDown tonight. <laughs> uh, but that's what I learned. I, and I learned something else he said he would do. But I'm not going to repeat that one. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I off, learned a lot. Off, off air. Off air. Off air. I'll tell you guys off air. Off stream. Can I, can I, can I know the uh, last thing before we go? What's that? Uh, how great would it have been if the SmackDown thing happened when that guy just started stripping at the ring saying he wanted a match? And then the jobber from a couple weeks ago was in bronze. <laughs> Is this I found what I'm looking for. Wait, wait, wait. Is this our second LBGT character? 
No, I don't think I don't no, think he counts. I don't think you're taking your pants off like the LGBT. Yeah, because I mean, then Cesaro would have I mean, already been there. I, I, I feel like I feel like maybe the people in the back don't know the difference. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, actually, I, I missed it. But like my my feed cut out like right in the middle. Like it, it was him. Like who's this guy talking in the ring? And then it cuts back and he has his pants off and Kane's coming out. I'm like, what the what? <laughs> it was a really confusing sequence. Demon Kane. Demon Kane. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, Mad Mike at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh. And, and by the way, guys, um, next week, not this week because I'm in Pittsburgh, so Eamon's gonna be handling the midweek war duties. But next oh, week, Lucha Underground is back, and we're gonna have a very special guest. El Hijo del Cueto himself to talk about the first episode and to give us spoilery tips for the season beyond. Krista Joseph's going to be back on the midweek. I really hope he brings on another mystery guest wrestler from Lucha Underground that also tells you to eat a bag of dicks. Yes. I I hope this as well. Yes. I hope either that or he calls in Stryker and... And we end up just talking about the Infinity Gauntlet for 35 minutes. That could be fun. That could be fun. <laughs> Striker flipped me off once. I have a funny still, story about uh, Matt Striker. I'll tell you. I'll, you don't I'm tell Matt Striker not to touch the mic. He'll Ooh. flip. He gets mad. Yeah, yeah I, I have a funny story about Matt Striker. I'll tell you about it later. Yes. <laughs> um. What am I doing? Oh, outro. oh I'm still outro doing outros. Short. You interrupted my outro flow. I I, I, I thought I almost asked, asked Eamon what he learned this week again. <laughs> Eamon! Eamon! What did you, you learn, learn this week? week? He's Eamon Payton. He's the voice of Inspire Pro Bro, Wrestling. Bro, Bro, He's straight out of Dallas. He knows who shot JR, and you can ask him about that at Eamon, too, please, on the Twitter. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, different JR, Eamon. Different JR. You don't okay, know that reference. Worried. You are a fetus. It's the same era as that tag team show we were just talking about. It's it's right wrestling.com. <laughs> <laughs> and well. of course, Alex Cars, Power to the Smarks on the Twitter. Obsessed. I'm sorry. Occupy no, Pro Wrestling. It's right in there front of me. It's right in Future front words. of me. I'm so broken. I'm Find so broken. The Lord. Broken Sorgatron. Broken Sorgatron. Sor, how do you say Finn Balor? Brother Sor, I knew you'd come. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'd come. It's my fucking house. Oh. No, Brother Sor's a different guy. He's here. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways uh, check out uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling. And Chakar and Fifteen, yes, they're good shows. Yes, I opened a Patreon for Occupy Pro Wrestling. Yes, that makes me happy. Yes, did I contribute yet? No, uh, not yet. Oh. Patreon.com. I will or, soon. Yeah, Patreon.com slash Occupy Pro Wrestling. I will soon. I will soon. Yay! As soon as I remember to, <laughs> I gotta at least start something at all my friends' Patreons. Like that's that's like my my role, as it is. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot. Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times! 412-206-WMS0. See you guys next time. Check out all the shows. Check out all the articles. Great articles last week by Matt Carlins and such. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.